here today with my Honey Boy 5 amp. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it um, and then I'm going to play through it a little bit so you can hear what it sounds like as well. So um, I've had this amp for a few months now. I've done a couple of tours with it and um, so far I've, I've been blown away by how good it is. Um, I actually bought it originally um, just to use on smaller gigs where there's less space on the stage um, and on gigs where it's not possible to turn the bigger amp up to the, the volume it needs to be at. Um, if you've ever used like a, a 4x10 bassman for harp you'll know that they need to be really loud um, before they start to sound good. Um, so that that's why I got this but um, truth is since I bought it I haven't actually used the big amp once and I've played a few a few bigger venues and a couple of festivals with it as well. Um, I just really haven't missed the bigger amp, um, and it's it's been nice just you know only carrying this thing around rather than a big four by ten or two by twelve that I used to use. Um, so this is a, a five watt amp. Um, it's got a, a single ten inch speaker inside, which is a Celestian Greenback. Um, for those of you that are, that are interested, the tubes in it are uh, the, the rectifier tube is a 5Y3S, uh, the power output tube is a 6V6GT, and uh, the preamp tube is a 12AU7. Um, uh, they do make a, a guitar version of this amp as well. Um, I think the only difference between the two is the, the choice of preamp tube and uh, the choice of, of speaker inside it. So, um, cosmetically, uh, it looks amazing. It's really, really well put together. Um, really high quality materials, all hand built from scratch. Um, and it's fully customizable as well. You can choose everything from the Tolex to the grill cloth, uh, all the hardware, everything. Um, I went for a kind of uh, vintage rock look with mine, since that's the kind of stuff that I do. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a few cool features about this amp that I really like. Um, first of all, if you look at the control panel up here, um, it's incredibly simple. We've just got volume and tone. Um, good thing about it being so small is you can crank it all the time. Even on a smaller stage, I still crank this to 9 or 10. Um, so you can always get the kind of response and the... the you know the the break up and distortion from the amp, um, even at a, a relatively low volume. Um, but that being said, it is still surprisingly loud for a small amp. Um, and then the tone, obviously, as you turn this up, it adds treble. As you turn it down, it removes treble. Um, I tend to have volume around nine or ten. Uh, tone anyway, anywhere from about halfway. Uh, sometimes up as high as nine actually, but I, I tend to use a bit more treble than most harp players. Um, I think because my, my style is more, uh, obviously more rock and a bit more guitar sounding, um, I'm looking for the, the cut more than the, the kind of big bassy bottom end. Uh, but it can still deliver that as well. Um, it's just, just down to the way that you play, as I'll demonstrate for you in a minute. Um, so really simple controls, um, there's a line out on the top there, um, I don't really use that personally. Um, <clears throat> another cool thing, if you flip this around, you can see the green back in there, um, and the valves at the top here. Um, you'll notice there's a little XLR output here, um, and this was an optional extra that I went for. Um, and what this is, it's, it's different from a line out, it's actually an integral microphone um, provided by SAM Systems, um, and a SAM Systems integral microphone, which sits somewhere behind the, the grill, just in front of the speaker. Uh, and what that means is when you mic the amp up on stage, you don't have to hang a mic in front of it or put a, a mic stand in front. Um, you just plug a, an XLR cable into the back of it and that's really good for two reasons. First of all, it, it saves space on stage. Um, 
And secondly, you know you're always going to get the same result and the same sound because the position of the microphone doesn't change at all um, where it's positioned over the speaker. And uh, I've been well impressed actually with, with how kind of true sound in the mic is. Um, I've walked out the front in, in the venue and listened to the art through the PA and the sound coming out of the PA is, is pretty much exactly the same as the sound coming out the front of the amp, which is what we want. <coughs> um, the other thing, uh, there's a little switch here, if you can see that, um, and that's got a character switch, um, or a, a loose tight switch. Um, basically, we flick to the right, um, you get a kind of tighter sound, and it doesn't start to break up until uh, until you're really cranking it. Um, with it flicked to the left, um, you can get more kind of break up and distortion at a lower level. Um, so if, if you were playing uh, a small venue where you really couldn't turn up very loud, but you still wanted that kind of um, you know traditional Chicago sound, then you can flick this to the left and uh, you, you can get that, that kind of break up at a slightly lower volume. Personally, I leave it to the right all the time. I prefer prefer the sound and I, I prefer to have the clarity um, and you can get a bit more usable volume out of it with it flip this way. So <clears throat> that's that. Um, I'm going to play, play through it a little bit so you can hear what it sounds like. Um, I'm going to start off playing some of my kind of style of, of blues rock harp and uh, and then I'll play a little bit of old school style with, with tongue blocking so you can hear how it responds to that as well. Okay, so um, I've got the volume and tone both set around six, so about halfway. Um, I'm just using a little bit of reverb from a Lone Wolf Spring Reverb pedal. And this is a C harp in my uh, custom wild tuning. So, um, start off with something a little bit more traditional. So, you know, it's it's got that kind of big full bottom end, but it's also quite aggressive. Um, it's really got some bite and some cut to it. Uh, let's play something a little bit higher up so you can hear how it responds to that as well. So it's really responsive all the way through, um, even you know right up, right up on hole ten. Um, yeah, um, one of the things I was I was kind of worried about with the the sort of smaller, more traditional amp um, was that it wouldn't work, wouldn't sound aggressive enough, wouldn't cut enough with with the sort of rock stuff that I play nowadays. Um, but it's it's just handles it no problem at all. Um, whether you want the more traditional sort of little water sound or the the more kind of rock guitar sound. Uh, it's all just to do with the way you play it, um, but it's it's all there. Yeah. 